Hi, I'm Sanjita. Today I'm making a pomfret curry for you from the Goa Karwar region. This one is from first principles. That is we'll be starting with grated fresh coconut. Like my quick and easy shrimp curry, this one is also pretty easy to prepare. There are however a couple of pressure points that you do need to be aware of and I will point them out to you as we go along. The link for the quick and easy curry is right here and in the description box. This is a lightly seasoned curry usually made with mild fish like the one I'm using pomfret or you can use tilapia, sea bass, indian salmon and even shrimp. Well, let's get started then. I'm using pomfret today. It was quite a big fish. I've sliced it, that is cut it into steaks and halved the slices. If the pieces are too big, they get quite unwieldy and are likely to break when cooked. I have marinated it a day before when I got it from the market. There's no need to do that. You can marinate it just before making the curry. This much coconut will yield a fair amount of curry. If you do not want too much gravy, reduce the quantity. I'm also going to add some optional coconut milk later. I'm using onion in two forms. The finely chopped onion is to be tempered for the curry, and the coarsely chopped one is to be ground along with the coconut. The green chilies will also go into the tadka. That is they'll also be tempered. The onion gives a hint of sweet flavor to the curry which goes well with the mild fish. These are the ingredients that are going to be finely ground. The coconut, onions, four whole red chilies. Curries made with less oily fish are usually a little less spicy. And I'm not adding any black pepper today. You can also skip the red chili altogether and grind the green chilies into the coconut. This also makes a tasty curry. the color will be lemon yellow rather than pale orange these are the sour agents that you can use a dried kokum is often used in goan cuisine it will make the curry reddish if you are using green chilies do not use kokum you want to get the pale yellow color tamarind is the most readily available of course the whole pieces must be ground along with the coconut otherwise you can use paste and these are dried raw mango slices They will not affect the color of your curry. I'm going to use these today. Fresh raw mango can also be used when in season. Okay, now we're going to make the coconut paste. The texture of the paste is a key pressure point for the fish curry. So I'm going to show this in some detail. The paste should be fine and homogeneous. Otherwise, the coconut will separate on boiling. There is a technique to making a fine paste. You need a rel relatively powerful mixer. and the correct balance between the quantity of coconut and water this is a lot of coconut so i'm going to have to do this in batches for my mixer i will need three batches in the first batch i'm going to put a cup of coconut a couple of chilies and the coriander seeds what we put in is is just approximate the key is not to overload the mixer one cup of water to start with initially you can see the paste is quite thick and coarse and it falls off the spoon in globs after one more whirl in the mixer it's looking deceptively smooth on the top but it's not ready at all i'm going to add some water now about half a cup is sufficient after adding that half cup of water you can see that the paste now is of a pourable consistency but not quite smooth now we can set the mixer on high power Just make sure that it is not too full with the paste. Otherwise you're likely to have it splatter everywhere. The paste is still a bit grainy on closer inspection. I'm going to add some more water. If you are using whole tamarind, you can add it in now. Okay, well, that water did it. Here's how it looks on further processing. It's thick but smooth, which is what we want. We can always thin it down with water later. without the fear of the paste separating this batch is done now for the next batch i'm going to add the onions and no chilies and then the third batch which will just have the remaining coconut and chilies all three batches are done it took about 10 minutes to process in my mixer remember this was a lot of coconut and this is the consistency of the finished paste we will need to thin it down with water later If the coconut paste is smooth and fine, it will not separate after cook. If you are worried that the coconut gravy will separate, especially if you're making it before you're completely proficient at it, add half a teaspoon of rice flour 
or 1 teaspoon of lightly toasted rice while grinding the rice acts as a binder and prevents the coconut from separating the next pressure point is the fish itself it is very delicate and so it tends to break easily when cooked you have to be a little careful while dealing with it i therefore prefer to use a flat pot or a pan to make fish curry preferably one that is wide enough to hold all the fish pieces in a single layer the pan is heating traditionally coconut oil is used in coastal regions and indeed it has the best flavor for fish in my opinion but you can use any oil drop in the chopped onion and fry until it is brown Are the onion is brown now lower the flame and add the whole chilies i've just cut the tops off this will allow the flavor to infuse in the curry without adding too much heat if you want your curry to be spicy you can slit the chilies and add them it's been about 3 minutes since we started cooking the onion does take a bit of time to brown now we can add the fish the slices are quite thin slightly less than half an inch add the fish in a single layer since fish is delicate cannot do much stirring of the curry after it is ready it's much easier to handle the fish if it is in one layer the same is not true for shrimp which is quite robust you can stir the shrimp curry as much as you like adding a little bit of water to prevent the masala from burning the idea of putting the fish in the tempered onion is not to fry it but just to seal the pieces on each side very often people directly add fish to the curry but i just like to heat them on each side for about 20 seconds before adding the coconut gently flip over the pieces they are less delicate when they are raw so this is the best time to do that and now we are ready for the coconut and you can see it's a smooth and fine almost like thick coconut milk the raw mango pieces or if you have tamarind paste or coca this is the place where you would add it if you use a whole tamarind it should be in the coconut already gently stir the curry without disturbing the fish they already cooked a little bit and will be quite delicate i'm going to add some more salt the fish already had some cover and let it simmer for about a couple of minutes on medium It's been 8 minutes so far. And it's a large quantity of curry, so it's going to take a bit of time to boil and simmer. I'm going to stir it gently because the pan is white and I want to make sure that everything is getting evenly heated. The curry has started boiling and I'm going to add some coconut milk. It's mainly added for the its creamy texture, but in this case I don't think it's really necessary. This curry is already quite coconut tea if i could say that and creamy as always stir it in gently taking care not to break the fish by now it's already cooked and it will be delicate usually the fish will cook quite quickly um except the tail and if you have the head in there will take longer at any point along the way you can taste and adjust the seasonings in the curry more chili powder or salt if it's too spicy I don't think this one will be in fact it will be quite mild add more coconut milk the curry needs to be spicier and i'm adding regular hot chili powder i'm just going to cover the curry for about a minute then we should be done there is plenty of liquid in it so you can keep it you know covered undisturbed for a couple of minutes it should be fine okay and we are done It's been a few minutes since I turned off the gas. I was preparing the rest of the meal. This curry is a little thick, so I'm going to thin it down with water before serving. I've taken out some of the curry with four pieces to make a less spicy version for my dad. I'm going to add more coconut milk to it to make it mild. This consistency is perfect for me. You can see how smooth it is. It looks as if it's all coconut milk and no ground coconut. Now we can prepare to serve. I have a simple Goan meal: omelet curry. steamed red rice green beans curry and dried shrimp kismore another typical goan dish which is a salad well that's it for fresh curry 
I'm going to leave you with this playlist on non-vegetarian gravies right here. I think you'll like it and find it useful. Let me know in the comments below if you would like a video on prepping and cleaning fish. Even the best, freshest fish can ruin a curry if it's not cleaned well. I'll see you again next week. Thank you for watching.